Hi, and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can do 3D inside Slider Revolution 5. I'm going to take you through some of the basic functions, what the different settings do, and show you a simple example of how you can use 3D space inside your sliders. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. I've got the latest edition of Slider Revolution 5 open, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new slider. Like I say, we're going to keep this simple, so we're just going to set some basic settings up like we'd normally do. So we'll give the slider a name. In this example, we're going to call it 3D. And we'll give it an alias. So we've named everything. I'm going to set it to Hero Scene because I only want one slide. And I'm going to set a simple size of... I'm going to set this to about 1000 by 500. Now, the dimension of this example are not particularly important because it is just literally an example of how you can do this. So what we need to do, first of all, is actually tell Slider Revolution that we want to work with 3D and parallax effects because by default, this is switched off. So we go to the right-hand side and we expand the parallax and 3D tab. You can see we've got the option to enable parallax and 3D. Switch that on and a whole host of new options are available to us. There are a couple of things that we can do on this and a couple of things I recommend we do as best practice. First thing is, I would say you're probably going to want to disable this on a mobile because it's not necessarily going to work in the way you want. But as with everything, test it out, see if it has the desired effect. If it does, switch it on. If it doesn't, switch it off. 3D, we want to enable that. And once we do that, you can see we now have a series of other options available to us. We can apply a 3D shadow, a 3D background disabled, slider overflow disabled or hidden, layers overflow hidden, and a 3D crop fix. Well, a 3D shadow is effectively, if you have a background that you want to animate around, then that will apply a shadow to that. So you can see as you move that around, then the shadow will look like it's floating off the page. For this example, I'm going to leave the background fixed. So I'm going to leave that off. Uh, so to do that, we can just switch the 3D background disabled. When we do that, then the background is fixed and will no longer move. We're going to set the overflow to be hidden. And we're going to set the overflow for the layers to be hidden as well. Because then we can kind of contain that inside the rectangle that's going to be the background. You can see if we look a bit further down, we've got the animation speed for mouse sens sensibility. I think they mean sensitivity. Um, so that just effectively is how fast when you move your mouse around inside the 3D space that animation is going to take effect. Then we've got 15 levels of depth. So these are used to de denote how far off any element the each layer is going to be. So you can specify that the first depth is 5 pixels and then when you actually set a particular layer to be f uh, Depth 1, it'll be 5 pixels off the background. Layer 2 or depth 2 will be 10 pixels and so on up to depth 15. Now, obviously, you can configure this to be any particular pixel value you want yourself. But I'd say try the, the default ones out first of all. You may well find they have everything you need already set up. But if you need to tweak it, you can come in and tweak it yourself. And as you can see right at the top, we've got default 3D depth. So every element that we apply to our 3D space inside right, Slider Revolution 5, if we don't specify a different value, it'll default to 55 pixels. So there's the basics. Let's just save that now and make sure that we get everything set up as we want. And then we're good to go and actually move on to creating the slider itself. So we're now in the slide editor. And as you can see, all the typical settings that we used to are available to us. We have a tab on the bottom that says Parallax and 3D, and that will now open up some additional options once we start to insert some elements onto the actual slider itself. So to start off with, let's create a background. We'll change the image because I'm going to actually upload an image that I want to work with. So I'm just going to drag an image in, let that upload. Once that's done, I'd normally set the alt text on there to make sure that we've got that set up for SEO, but this is a demo site on my local server, so I'm not going to worry about that hit insert, we've now got the background, which if you remember back to the original settings, we've set that to be fixed. So the background is not going to move. So we don't need to deal with any 3D elements on that. So there's our background. We can take a look at it. So what we want to do now is start adding some layers that we're going to use in this 3D animation. So if we click 
or take our mouse over the add layer, you can see we've got six different options available to us. And I'm going to start off with just by inserting an image. But any of these are going to work in fundamentally the same way. So if you put a button on there, that'll still move around in 3D space if you set it up to do so. So let's just say we're going to use an image. I'm going to choose a small image that I've got, which I think is this one. Nope, that's the large version. We'll go for this one and we'll insert that. We'll position that where we want. And now if we come over to the Parallax and 3D, you can see we've now got two options available to us. We've got 3D depth. And as I said, you can see we've got all those 15 different options available, or we can leave it to default, which was 55 pixels. And we can specify we want to attach it to, and you can see we've got layers 3D group or background 3D group. Well, this is layers, so we're going to set that on there. We're going to set this to have a value of 15%. Percent, not pixels, my mistake. So we've now created a layer that has a 3D depth of 15% on a fixed background. So let's just save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a demonstration page and we'll take a look at what this looks like actually embedded in the page and how it's all going to work and how that 3D effect starts to take, take effect. So here's our demonstration page and we've got our 3D slider embedded into the page itself. So as you can see, it looks like a normal slider at the moment, nothing special there. But what we can do is if we take our mouse over the slider, you'll see we'll start to move around inside 3D space. So as you can see, our layer with the image on there now starts to move around. As we move the mouse around, you can see it moves around in 3D space based upon the mouse position. But the background itself is fixed. And you'll also notice that as I move around, the image itself, if it goes outside the constrained area of the background, it starts to crop itself off so it's hidden. So these are the settings that we set up originally. So let's go back in and take a look at making some changes to those. We'll add another layer with a different depth and we'll see how that all works out on the slider itself in a live environment. So I'm back inside Slider Revolution 5 and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert another image onto this and then we're going to set that to have a different depth so you can see how this takes effect, how different depths can have different effects on the page itself or on the slider. So let's just come in, add a new layer, we'll come down, we want to insert an image again and we'll just choose this picture of a cat. We'll position that over the other side. We'll come up to the 3D depth. And what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll set that to be, we'll have to go for 50%. So that, even though it looks like it's on the same level on this, when we start to animate this through 3D, you'll see that it now looks like it's further off the page. So it will move differently to our first image. So let's save that slider. We'll switch back over to the demonstration page and refresh that. And once that reloads, you'll see we now have our two layers in there. And if I bring the mouse inside the slider area, you can now see that the image of the cat moves at a dip different rate, simulating the fact it's further off the background than the image of the woman. So if I just go back into slider revolution a second and we move that, we'll put it we'll put it over the actual image of the woman and resave that. And you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about when it comes to the depth. So we'll reload. And we'll try that again now. So you can now see that when you look at that, it does look like the cat is closer to you than the actual woman is. So the 3D space looks more realistic. So that's the basics of actually creating the layers and putting the different depths on there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch back into Slider Revolution settings and we'll adjust some of the settings we set up originally to control the way the slider actually appears. We'll set the background to move and we'll put a drop shadow on there just so you can see how it works. So we switch back over to Slider Revolution and we'll come back up to the slider settings. Yes, we'll see they leave the page, which is one of the new things that they've added to Slider Revolution. It's a warning if you try to exit a page, even though you've saved it. So let's go back to the Parallax and 3D settings. And this time, let's come back up and we'll say we want the 3D shadow on. We don't want to disable the 3D background. And we don't want... We'll switch those off. So there's nothing hidden. So we're going to see exactly everything in 3D space. We'll save that, we'll switch back over to the demonstration page, and we'll take a look at what that looks like now with the updated settings. Okay, so we're back on the demonstration page, and as you can see, we've got a drop shadow now around the edge of our background, and we set this now so it's no longer constrained, it's no longer fixed, so the background now becomes part of the 3D animation, the 3D effect that we've got. So we take our mouse over that, the background, including the images, now start to move around in three-dimensional space. 
which is quite a cool effect. So you can see the different layers, the different levels that we've set for those now interact with the animated background and the drop shadow gives it that effect that it looks like it is actually spaced off the page itself. So that's all there is to the basics of creating 3D animated slides inside Slider Revolution 5. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the new tutorials added to the channel every single Wednesday. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we've got on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and try to answer any questions or queries that are posted. So until next time, take care.